Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, number 755, Manya, which means the object of honor, he who is to be respected. So, God is to be respected. It's, it, it almost doesn't need to be said it, it, at all. It's, it's axiomatic. If there's God, yes, there is God. He's to be respected. Otherwise, what's the meaning of him being God? So there are many names like this, uh, which are directly or indirectly imply that he is respectable. Allahu Akbar. God is great. That's how it's often translated. Here in Vishnu Sahasranam also we have names like Stavya. Already Stavya means the one who is glorified with Vedic hymns. So it's very similar. It, it's, it, he's to be respected and then how is he to be respected? By offering him Vedic hymns and so on. Now, you may remember, if you've been following, that the previous two names we had uh, in Vishnu Sahasranam, the previous two names that we discussed were Amani and Manada. So, Mana, here the, the root, the, the Mana, means respect. So, Amani means he's not eager for, to be respected. Manada means he gives respect. And mana, manya, the name we're discussing today, means that he is the one who is to be honored. It's a common Sanskrit uh, formation. Manyaha, one who is respectable. <clears throat> that, that at the end, the ya, kartavya that which is to be done, one's responsibility or one's duty. Now the whole Vishnu Sahasranam and everything in theism rests on the premise that he is manya, he is respectable, and the whole purpose of Vishnu Sahasranam is to offer him respect. Why should we recite Vishnu Sahasranam? Why should we discuss Vishnu Sahasranam? The whole idea is that he is respectable. We, we, there are innumerable living beings in the universe. Why are we concentrating in the one universe, the multiverse? Uh, there's the Tripad Vibhuti and the Ekapad Vibhuti, the spiritual world, which is three times greater than the material world. And there are so many living beings, innumerable living beings. But why are we discussing so much about Vishnu? Because he is, by all his qualities, which are manifest in his Vishnu Sahasranam. His qua in Vishnu Sahasranam, there are different kinds of names. Some names, they pertain to his Swarup or his innate nature. Some names about his rupa, his form, how beautiful he is. Some are about his uh, guna, his qualities, and some are about his chishtita, his activities, his pastimes. But the, all of the names, they increase all these, all of Vishnu Sahasranam is on the basis that we should offer him respect. That's the, that's the general mood in which the Vishnu Sahasranam is recited. It's a mood of respect, loving respect. You can respect someone and hate them also. Uh, there may be a, a despot dictator of a country, people, you respect him, definitely you have to respect, but it's a forced respect and it's not with love, it's out of fear. So this whole idea that we should fear God, which is very much promoted in some theistic systems, 
that is not the emphasis in the Vaishnav system. And especially we'll see when discussing this name, Manya, uh, with discussing it with the commentary of Parashara Bhatta, who is, of course, the original Sri Vaishnav commentator on Vishnu Sahasranama. Uh, we'll find that he very much emphasizes the loving aspect in this name and all the names. The loving aspect of the Supreme Lord, Vishnu, Whereas Shankara Acharya emphasizes more the, the uh, mood of deep respect. And they're both, of course, completely valid approaches. Now, the name we had previously, Manada, one who gives respect to others, many theists will find that difficult, especially in the Abrahamic traditions, the idea that he offers respect to others, they might even object to it. Why, why should God offer respect to anyone? He, uh, in Islam, at least theoretically, they don't like the idea that, well, they say you can respect others, but you shouldn't worship them. Although exactly where the, the only, only Allah is to be worshipped. Although exactly where the line between respect and worship uh, where, where exactly where the line is drawn, it's, uh, it, it's not possible to exactly demarcate it. Anyway, we know the Supreme Lord as one who offers respects to others, but not everyone will accept that, but all theists will accept that he is to be offered respect to, and respect up to the level of Worship. Uh, worship is a form of um, respect, which is more than casual respect. It's a, it's a very formal expression of respect for someone who is the most highly respected. So this is the basic principle of theism, that we accept there is the Supreme Person, and that he is to be bowed down before, actually. I mean, respect means, yes, bowed down before. Uh, and the basic principle of atheism is to reject that. And they mock theists. Why? Uh, what is this all God and respecting a God and God doesn't exist? They can't accept that anyone is so superior that you should respect him so much. Therefore, they're called demons. That's the word that Srila Prabhupada used. Demons. It's a very strong word in English to use to say someone's a demon. But if someone is against the existence of God, if they don't accept that, if they refuse to respect God, even at the most basic level, even someone may, may be a theist but not a very developed theist, they may not be a big philosopher, or they may not understand... Yeah. They may worship in a very uh, primitive way. Actually, most of the theists in the world, they worship in a very primitive way in the sense that they, uh, God give us money, God give us happiness in this world. So that's not a very developed concept of God, but it's implicit in it is acceptance of his supremacy and that we have to respect him. So this name comes after Manada, Manya. He is actually the one to be respected. He gives respect. Manada means he who gives respect. But actually, inherently, he is the one who is to be respected. And who is he going to respect? Well, he'll respect his devotees in his pastimes. Devotees like Yudhishthira, for instance, Yudhishthira knows that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, but he accepts Krishna. He accepts Krishna as offering respect to him because he knows it's all part of Krishna's pastime. And Yudhishthira also respects Krishna, of course. Some devotees, even in Krishna's pastimes, they find it difficult to accept respect from Krishna. And they, they, some prime examples of that, of that are Devaki and Vasudev. 
that's described in the Bhagavatam, in Srila Prabhupada's Krishna book, how Devaki and Vasudev, after Kangsa had been killed, and they felt somewhat uncomfortable being the father and mother of Krishna because they knew he's so respectable. But then Krishna had them covered with the yoga maya potency because he didn't like them to be so respectful to him when he wanted to give respect to them. For Nanda and Yashoda, they accept respect from Krishna love of course but Krishna respects them his father and mother and they just accept it because they don't have a concept of him being the Supreme Lord it comes very naturally to them Vrindavan pastimes are very natural in one place Srila Prabhupada commented that Arjuna he was naturally friendly with Krishna but when he saw the universal form of Krishna he started to think oh I was so wrong previously when, when I was treating Krishna so f familiar, familiarly and in such a friendly way. Uh, hey Yadava, hey Krishna, hey Yadava, hey Sakha, Iti. I was addressing you as Yadava. Hey, hey Yadava, hey, come on Yadava. Oh, my friend. I didn't know how great you were. And Srila Prabhupada commented that Arjuna actually, in the sense of bhav, he came down because his, when he wasn't respecting Krishna out of an intimate sense of friendship, then he was in the term of rasavicha, in the term of, uh, of his natural interaction with Krishna. He came down to the platform of respecting Krishna. So respecting Krishna is very good. We should respect Krishna. But especially, especially the Gauriyas teach us that there is love beyond surrender. That's the title of an essay by Srila Prabhupada. Actually, it's, it's redacted from one of his lectures. It, well, that's the title, Love Beyond Surrender. Surrender means respect, but then there's love beyond that. But first of all, we have to see that he is respectable. Bef we shouldn't start thinking that how he will respect me. Oh, he's Manada, good. Well, I'll have, I'll have God bow down to me. No, first we have to learn how to respect him. He is by his very personality, we're talking about there are four kinds of names, by his swarup, his inherent nature is to be respected by everyone. Now, it depends where we are on the platform of Rasa Vichar. If we're very high, then we'll say his very nature is to be respected by others, but I was just chasing him the other day to punish him, Mother Yashoda thinks. Um, Mother Yashoda is not a great philosopher. She's the greatest devotee. She's not a great philosopher. <laughs> At least she doesn't appear to be a great philosopher. So, uh, so if one thinks, oh yeah, okay, well, I'll have God respect me and, and God will come down and... But no, 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 no. That's true when we're up there. But to get up there, we have to, first of all, we have to respect him properly because our whole problem in this material world is that we don't, properly respect him and that's why we're in this material world so we have to learn to respect him properly Radha Krishna Shastri one of the commentators is that as Manada commenting on these three names Amani, Manada, Manya he comments as he is the one who is to be supremely respected. He is Manya, but he likes to see that his devotees are respected. Manada. He doesn't present himself. Inherently, he's not thinking, I am the one to be respected. He's thinking, in that sense, he's a Mani. 
But he wants to see that his devotees are respected. He's manada. And therefore, he's manya. Radha Krishna Shastri says. He's most respectable because he doesn't want respect for himself. He wants to give respect to his devotees. Now you may say, well, he does want respect for himself. He's speaking Bhagavad Gita. He says, Mame kam sharnam raja. Ah. He says, Manmana bhava madhbhakto madhyaji maunamaskuru. You, you become my devotee, you worship me, bow down to me, offer me, uh, offer me respect. He does want respect. It's Bhagavad Gita. Come on, how can you say to him want respect? Well, he, he tells us that because he knows that's what's good for us. And yes, he does enjoy accepting respect also. But what he really wants more than anything, and that's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, how the scolding of himself by his lovers is more pleasing to him than the recitation of the Vedic hymns by those who respect him. So it's a, uh, it's a very high topic to understand. Let's, let's try to respect him first of all. Now, in the, the Sri Vaishnava Acharya, yeah, I, mean, I was just quoting Radha Krishna Shastri there. He's a Sri Vaishnava Acharya, I presume. Uh, following after Parashara Bhatta, he, they all stress in this name Manya that this is why he is respectable because of this quality of wanting to boost his devotees. Uh, that's the more than his magnificence in being within every atom, creating, maintaining, and destroying unlimited universes with every universe has unlimited living beings within it. More than that, he's to be respected because he gives respect to his devotees. This is the Sri Vaishnavas. They comment on that. Um, but I'm going to take the point, first of all, that we can first of all understand very easily that he is respectable um, because of his opulence. And Shankaracharya takes this point. Sarvai mananiya. That's another way of saying it. Mananiya. Manya mananiya. Uh, Sarvai mananiya. Sarvai mananiya pujaniya sarveshvaratvat iti manyaha. He is the one who is to be respected and worshipped by all in all respects. Therefore, he's called manya. This is what Shankara, Shankaracharya says. In this regard, Satyadeva Vashishta points out that he he is worthy of being worshipped, and, and he specifically gives the reason, Satyadeva Vashishta, because it is because of him that everything exists and functions. Now, if you remember the Manada, the, the name Manada, Satyadeva Vashishta, he gave a different meaning to the, the one who gives honor to others. He's he, Satyadevo, Satyadevo Vashishta, gave the meaning that he gives measurement and he explains that everything in the universe has its particular function and it can be, uh, everything has its particular specificness, Vaishishta, uh, Vishishta Advaita. This is the philosophy of Ramanuja, Vishishta Advaita. Everything has its own specificness. Um, a frog is a frog because it looks like a frog. It doing, doing, doing jumps here and there like a frog and it croaks extremely loud at night like a frog. The rainy season in the village. It's frog season. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just came to mind, frogs. So that's just one example. But 
he he is the one who gives specificness to every different thing which makes everything in the universe have its own specific function and it interacts You're talking about frogs well the frogs they eat different bugs and uh, then the snake eat the frog and the mongoose eats the snake and some village people they catch mongooses mongoose mongooses and eat them also and yeah it's the chain of life they say the humans at the top of the food chain oh, watch out when you're in the jungles there's still leopards in the jungles around here and they might like to eat you too <laughs> so satyadeva vashishta uh he gives the meaning of him he he makes the the meaning manya he is worthy to be worshiped because he is manada in the sense that he gives order to everything and i commented i expanded on that discussion in discussing about the mathematical god uh well known but there are so many verses within our vedic literature to establish that he is the supreme personality of godhead uh the acharyas commenting on this manya name they quote ishavasyam idam sarvam yat kinchit jagatam jagat he is the overseer the master the protector the owner of everything he's the one who makes the universe move gachatiti uh, eti jagat that which moves its nature is to move is the jagat that's the definition he is the supreme mover of everything in vivek churamani it is not so not a text that we vaishnavas often like to quote although actually you could give a vaishnava commentary on many if not all of the verses but you'd have to yeah yeah there are actually very good teachings in there if we just take away the impersonalism which runs throughout it all but anyway in vivek churamani one of shankar maybe his shankar's most famous work even more than his sharir ka basha <clears throat> anyway in vivek churamani he uses shankar used the term manya to refer to those blessed souls who have been able to realize the supreme being dhanya samanya bhuvi of course in vivek churamani that realize the supreme being means it's an impersonal understanding it's heavily heavily impersonalistic work and it's from shankar acharya what do you expect then let's think about that some more if those who have realized the supreme being are manya are respectable are worshipable then how much more is the supreme lord who is the supreme being he's the very substratum and support of the whole universe how much more respectable is he and and the, all the people who are trying to realize god they're trying to realize him so how much respectable is he but unfortunately for the followers of shankar acharya they get the wrong idea that they become the supreme that is their great mistake they want to become the most respected but they're not and although they say they have to become free from egoism actually they boost their egoism like anything and generally you see mayavadis they're very puffed up kind of people thinking that they're god when they're not the actual manya is vishnu who is all pervading you can imagine yourself to be all pervading but you are not it's only an imagination whereas vishvam vishnu we have at the very beginning of vishnu sahasranam he is the one who 
pervades the whole universe. Not you or I or anyone else. It's Vishnu. And you can say also that's sometimes a contentious point. But why should it be? Lakshmi, she also, along with Vishnu, pervades everything. Here is an explanation from the uh, Madhva Sampada they've offered in their in one uh, exposition of Vishnu Sahasranam, one publication they've brought out. Sarveshvarat, Sarveshvarat Vena Sarvai Pujatvat Manya. Vishnu is called Manya because he is respectable by those who are themselves respected. He is Sarveshvareshva. He, uh, he is Sarveshva. He is the controller of everything. And he is Sarveshvareshva. Those who are the controllers of everything within their own sphere. Uh, he is the controller of all of them. And I've often quoted Young Brahma, Varunendra, Rudra, Marita, Stun, Vanti, Divyai, Stavai. I often quote that in my Vishnu Sahasranam talks. He is the one who is respected. He is offered stava. He is stavya. He is offered prayers of glorification by Brahma, Brahma, Varuna, Indra, the Rudras, the Maruts, and all the great persons who are themselves highly respected overseers of the universe. In this regard, I will recite one song by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his series of songs, Sharanagati. Sharanagati means the way of taking shelter of the Supreme Lord. That is by respecting him, not by disrespecting him. So one of the songs, and I'll give the an English translation which has been given to this. To me, Sarveshvareshvara, Brajendra Kumar, Tomari Chai Bishe, Srijana Shangha. O youthful son of the king of Raja, that's Brajendra Kumar, you are the lord of all lords. To me, Sarveshvareshvara. So this is explaining how he is manya. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting this to explain how he is manya by this understanding that he is respected by those who are respected. He is the lord of those who are lords. You are the lord of all lords according to your will, the creation and destruction of the universe take place. And this whole song goes on to elaborate on how Krishna is Sarveshvareshvara. He is the Lord of the Lords. Tava Icha Mato Brahma Karena Srijan Tava Icha Mato Vishnu Karena Palan According to your will, Lord Brahma creates, and according to your will, Lord Vishnu Maintains. That's very interesting, isn't it? Because Brajendra Kumar is Vishnu, but a little different also in some ways. Tava Icha Mote Shiva Karena Shangha Tava Icha Mote Maya Sri Karaga. According to your will, Lord Shiva destroys, and according to your will, Maya constructs a prison. Karaga means prison, and that means the prison house of this material world. Taba icha mate jibe janama maran shamridini pate dukha shukha shangatan. According to your will, the living beings take birth and die, and according to your will, they meet with prosperity and ruin, happiness and sorrow. Miche Maya Badha Jiva Asha Pashe Fire Tabe Echa Bina Kichu 
Corite na pare. The tiny soul, the jiva, bound up by Maya, vainly struggles in the fetters of worldly desire. Without your sanction, he is unable to do anything. To me, to rakoka palaka ama tomacharon bina asha nahia. You are my only protector and maintainer, except for your lotus feet. There is no other hope for me. Nija bala cheshta prati bharasha charya tomari chaya chi nirbhoy karya. No longer confident of my own strength and endeavor, I have become solely dependent on your will. Bakati bino da oti dina okinchan tomar ichai tar jibanamaran. Bhakti Vinod presenting himself as very low, fallen, and having nothing in this world except Krishna, says that by your, referring to Brajendra Kumar Krishna, by your wish, uh, he, Bhaktivinoda, lives or dies. So this is where this manya comes to. Then by understanding him to be totally respectable because he's totally in control of us. Uh, he gives us a little uh, minute independence which we can use to surrender to him and this understanding that he is the supreme, he is to be respected, then we should surrender to him. That's the whole point which is being brought out in this song by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Uh, from the Madhva Sampradaya again. Manyo nitang cheshta yitung yogya anyasa bhavatiti manya There is none to make him act. And he himself acts out of his volition. Hence, Vishnu is called Manya. In other words, he's not forced to act. He does what he likes. He's independent. He's in a completely different category to all of us. And therefore, he is Manya. He is to be respected. Hare Krishna. So let's respect him and love him and surrender to him by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All glories to the all glorious, all respectable Supreme Personality of Godhead who is known as Vishnu and many other names also, but at least a thousand names. And we particularly bow down our head to him uh, as Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhubya evacha patitanam pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. Dante nithaya churna kang padaya nipatya kritva chaka kushata meta daham bravimi. He sadava sakala eva vihaya durat. Goranga chandra charane kurutanu ragaha. Parivada tujano yatata tava nanu mokaro navayang vichare yamaha. Hari rasa madira madati matta bhuvi vilutama nartama nirvishama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.